Hello, and welcome to the Notary Business Talk, the podcast dedicated to sharing ideas, strategies, and techniques to help grow your business and improve your life. And now, with more than two decades of notary business experience, your host, Abraham Zamora, the notary entrepreneur. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Notary Business Talk. My name is Abraham Zamora, I am the notary entrepreneur, and as many of you may already have noticed that on the title of this podcast, it is my final podcast. I am actually going to stop podcasting moving forward, and so I'd like to take the time at this point to sort of maybe take a step back and reflect on my career as a notary and sort of what is next for me, because I think for a lot of people, you may think notary is sort of like the end, right? Like that is where if I can become a notary and become successful, I'm going to end there. But for a lot of us, it might actually be the beginning of a, of a vast and abundant entrepreneurial journey. And so uh, that is exactly what is happening to me. And, uh, and there's a reason why we're going to get into why I'm going to stop podcasting. But before we get into that, if many of you may notice who are watching on YouTube, I have a very pretty lady next to me. Uh, and this is uh, going to be my special guest for my final episode. And this is actually my daughter. I know many of you have heard of her through my podcast in the past. I've talked to her about her many times. Well, now she's here on the podcast. And so I'm very excited to to have her on the show. She is now 14 years old and uh, going ready to go, getting ready to go to high school. We'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, Yadi, welcome to the show, Mija. Thank you, Dad. Yeah, you're very, very welcome. Now, the reason I have my daughter on the show with me today is because I don't think it would be appropriate or even complete to talk about my career as a notary without having my daughter uh, on the show because out of Everyone and anyone that I've had in my life throughout my career, she has been the one that has been with me throughout most of that career. In fact, ever since she was born, she has basically lived through my journey. Uh, in fact, my notary business has allowed me to do certain things that I would not have been able to do. And a lot of the motivation behind that was for my daughter. A lot of the reasons why I did what I did was because of the things that my daughter and I uh, would do and the things I decided to do when it came to my daughter. So let me get into that and kind of tell, say what I, what I mean by that. So it's been, how long has it been now? Maybe five, six years since I, since I divorced with your mom. Something like that, no, right? Like, yeah, talking to, there you go. Uh, seven years, yeah, actually, maybe more than that now. Yeah. Seven, eight years, yeah. And so uh, my daughter was, how old are you, honey? Like seven, eight? Yeah, I was seven. Seven, eight years old when, when her mom and I separated. And uh, as a consequence, her mom had to, you know, she was on her own. And so she had to go and she had to work full time. Well, one of the things that we, we uh, I decided to do with my daughter was I decided to homeschool her. Again, a lot of you know the story that I homeschooled my daughter. And part of the reason why was because she was struggling with reading. Uh, she was great in everything else, but reading was a subject that she had a hard time with. Well, later, my my new wife now identified with her help. We identified that my daughter was dyslexic, and that was part of the reason why she had a hard time reading. By the way, I want to talk about a milestone that my daughter just accomplished when it came to reading. I'm so proud of her. But uh, as a result of that, I decided to homeschool her. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't have my notary business, because my notary business allowed me to raise my daughter to have the time to do that and uh, be able to homeschool her and ultimately do this podcast. But I want to ask you, Yadi, I mean, coming from your perspective, because I've really never asked you this before. And so what was it like? I mean, how? What was the earliest memory of you and me being alone, homeschooling, and noticing that I would go out and do this notary job? And kind of, what, what did you think I was doing? What, what, what was your interpretation, like from your point of view, of dad being notary, being home? Like, g give me your thoughts about that. Um, I thought it was pretty normal because you know it was all I knew. Yeah. And when I when I would um, see you check the the loan documents and everything, I kind of just thought you were just looking at them and then making sure everybody signed them. So I didn't think too much. I was like, it's a pretty easy job. <laughs> so I was like, maybe I should do that when I grow up. All right. So I think it was, it was very, um, 
I would say it made me want to, like, work from home. It made me want to be very independent and kind of, like, have a job like that, too. Recently, you were telling me that one of the things you want to do when you grow up is, is be able to work from home and work remotely. Would you, do you think that part of that idea of doing that came maybe from kind of growing up, seeing me work from home like that? I would say it had a lot of influence on my decision. Really? Yeah. Okay. Now, I, when we would do appointments, as you got older, we were able to, I was able to take you with me and... and um, and we would sometimes we would drive all day, and so I would go into appointments, and she would essentially be waiting in the car for me to. I mean, I would have it running with the air conditioning when it was hot and stuff. But um, honestly, I, I gotta tell you, I felt bad sometimes just leaving you in there. What well, was that experience for you? Oh, I'm gonna be honest. Well, you, I never, I wasn't, I was never in the car like for too long, but I would say it was like good memories because I remember going, seeing things, experiencing things I would never have been able to experience if I was in like a classroom. So I'll say it was like very happy memories. And some of my best memories of growing up were like when I was going with you. Really? Do you, can yeah. you think of any that you can remember? Oh, I can't really like think of one right now, but anytime I would go with you, we would just like talk, listen to music or go out to eat or just have talks about any little thing. It was very fun for me. Yeah, I and mean, we would go a lot. I mean, as you guys know, people who who are notaries who travel a lot, you you you, know, you get to visit a lot of interesting places. I mean, we would go to the desert, we would go to the mountains a lot. Yeah, yeah. And then when we whenever we we'd go somewhere far, I remember we would actually purposely stop by and eat somewhere, right? Like yeah, or we would just like spend the rest of the days hanging out there. That's true. Yeah. So like one time we were in the mountains, and I remember we were in this little cafe, and we were eating this like chocolate milk and we went on a hike after and it was like one of my best memories and we've uh, made it like a point to stop there every time we went out there yeah right exactly uh so so yeah i mean what an it i get and i guess now that i think about it it was kind of part of that homeschooling experience wasn't it yeah because uh, what would you say you got out of that sort of uh experience of going with me and seeing places like what did you learn what did you get from that I wouldn't say I learned too much, but I would say it did give me, like, an experience that did kind of shape my personality. Yeah. Like, because now I want to have more free time than have to work in a classroom or go into, like, an office job. Right. Right. Yeah, and so now one of the milestones, right, and this is kind of part of why I'm deciding to to move on into something else is because we've actually officially ended homeschooling as of... What, a month ago now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, homeschooling is done. Now, uh, as we she got older, I, I couldn't homeschool her anymore. I mean, it, it's, it, the, the subject matter just became too difficult, and, and it, was, it needed to be very specialized. So for some of the subject matters, like for reading and writing and grammar and that sort of thing, I actually ended up hiring tutors to help her with that stuff. And um, one of the things we did was a program called the Barton Reading System, and this is a, a reading system specially designed for people, or mainly children, but people who are dyslexic, and it teaches them sort of how to read the, the classical phon phon uh, phonemic way. And but I, it, it works for anybody who wants to learn how to read and improve it. And it's a ten. There's ten books, right? Ten books, and not very many actually accomplish this. I think in the whole country, it just shy of, of over three thousand students have actually graduated and finished all 10 books and what was it just a month ago or so you she my daughter graduated and now she reads better than me <laughs> i i come to her honey can you read this for me no that's not true but um so as a result what what so now that we're not homeschooling what uh well we had some decisions right you could have continued to home what did you end up deciding to do and why um, I decided to go to high school, and my main decision for that was to kind of figure out what I liked more, because I kind of already knew what I wanted to do, but now it's like, oh, what field I would want to be in. Okay. So more to sort of uh, experience the world out there and see what's yeah. what's available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, she recently just got a, re a letter of recommendation from a doctor for a summer program to work in a laboratory with uh, with mice and, uh, and and sort of doing some research, which seems interesting to you, doesn't it? It does, because I don't really like those traditional jobs, like an office job. Right, right. Very good. Yeah, so she's going back to high school. Now, as a result of going back to high school, it's sort of given me a lot of freedom of time. And so 
part of the reason why I was able to do the podcast is because I had the time because I was homeschooling. And then I had another daughter, my stepdaughter, who I would take to school and back. because She she traveled far for her school. She's now moving to a different school. So so now things are different. But my point is that for the last 15 years or so, my daughter, you're 14 now, right? So yeah. for the last 14 years, since my daughter was small, I've been able to be home with her. I've been able to raise her when when her mom was no longer uh, as available to 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 be home with her because she had to go work to sustain herself, uh, I was able to stay home with her and still manage to pay the bills and you know uh, make a living. And so, uh, and it was a, it was a totally selfish reason of mine, right? I mean, the, I valued my my daughter and her happiness and her education or success way more than going out there and making a bunch of money. I will admit I didn't make a bunch of money, right? But I did make enough money to achieve my ultimate value. Well, now my daughter's moving on. And so now it's time for me to change, right? So any final words that you want to say about sort of what it was like growing up with a dad who was self-employed as a notary? I'll say... It was very nice to yeah. always have like a free time with my dad. Like I never had to worry about you going to work or not having enough time because you always like made enough time to hang out with me. Yeah. Yeah. And it was very, very, I, I would say her, my daughter and I have a really, really good relationship. Uh, philosophically, we both sort of think alike. I've been able to uh, sort of share with her my values and the way I think. Many of you know I'm an objectivist. And so you know, just through, through conversation and stuff, I've been able to really, I think, have a positive impact on my daughter. And I, again, I owe it all to my notary business. So now let's talk about what's next, right? Cause I know a lot of you enjoy this part this podcast. Initially, the po purpose of this podcast was for me to monetize it and make money and, and make a living. And uh, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do that. And, uh, originally I was going to create a course and kind of go down that route. Uh, decided not to do that. I started the Patreon page and I actually started getting people to subscribe and, and connect with. I realized I didn't really like that either, so I canceled that. So if, if any of you are trying to find the Patreon page, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, but I, what I will recommend is for those of you who want to continue education, who want to continue moving forward in your notary career, uh, then I would recommend notary stars. I've recommended them before, and there's a there's an affiliate link in the in the description. So if you want to support all of that you you know, show your gratitude for all the work that I've done for you guys. Uh, it doesn't cost you any extra. Just go through my link and then I get, you know, a little bit of, um, of, uh, of an income from, from that route as well. So, but now what's next, right? I'm still going to continue doing notary work. I'm no longer going to do loan signings like I used to. I'm going to move on from that. I'm going to continue doing my general notary business work. Now that my daughter's going to high school and really be, has become more independent, she spends a lot more time with her mom and her step and her hat, uh, her brother, who she helps kind of with with uh, taking care of him and raising. Uh, I'm going to do something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, which is start a financial services agency. I was in financial services for a long time ago, about 15 years ago. I loved it, due to circumstances, due to the divorce, I was no longer able to continue to do that. I now have the opportunity and the freedom since I've accomplished my goal with my daughter to go out there and pursue my, my happiness and pursue my next career. And so moving forward, that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. But because I appreciate that you guys have listened for so long and if you guys have been, I've had very loyal fans in this show. I will continue to stay in touch with anybody who wants to communicate with me. The best way to do that would be to either email me at, um, it might be contact at a, a notary uh, unlim, uh, contact at notarybusinesstalk.com, but I may end up canceling that. So let me give you my personal email, which is info at abrahamzamora.com. And I'm also most active on LinkedIn. So I will have a, a link to my LinkedIn account. If you want to connect with me, that will be the way to connect with me. I don't connect with people through Instagram or Facebook. Mainly because one, I want to keep most of my you know personal life private, and two, I'm hardly ever on there. I kind of like you, Yaddy. I, I hardly ever post. I mean, you know, very private, yeah, very private, right? We're very private. See how similar we are. I mean, twin. people even say we look alike. Is that what do you guys think? We twin in. We twin. <laughs> we twin in. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Except I'm an Android guy and my daughter's a what? iPhone. She's an iPhone girl. I don't know. I mean, I, I might have to be, I might have to turn iPhone one day. You keep can tell me it's pretty yeah, good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's All right. better. <laughs> okay, we'll see about that. Um, but anyway, so if you guys still want to reach out, connect, you know, contact, at, have questions for me. And if any, any way I can possibly help you guys, I'll be more than happy to do that. But this will be my last podcast episode thank you all of you for listening all these years that you've been listening hopefully i get to hear from you guys in the future in some capacity and if you want to get into the financial services industry i am going to be looking to uh, looking to building and training agents to build an agency nationwide so if that's something that does pique your interest something you may want to have a conversation about please reach out to me you can always contact me through email or linkedin anyway well, guys, thank you for tuning in. Until next, well, hold on, there is no next time. So I wish you guys the most productive, exciting, thrilling career. And I want to say thank you for all of you for tuning in and take care, you guys. I really appreciate every single one of you. Wish you the best. Bye now. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Notary Business Talk. To learn more about becoming a notary entrepreneur or to find out how Abraham can help you achieve your business goals, visit notarybusinesstalk.com.